is Dr. Debbie Smith, and I'm talking to you this afternoon from sunny Southern California. And our topic today is why do men stonewall and what can you do about it? Hello, I'm Dr. Debbie, and I've been helping men, women, and couples grow together for more than 25 years. Now it's your turn to learn what I learned and taught as a couples counselor and university professor. You are the wise woman, and this is your personal development podcast packed with instant encouragement and practical tips, and men can learn about women too, because this is a safe place where women are valued and men are respected. We talk about biology, socialization, behavior, emotions, communication, and connection, because men and women are different. Always have been, always will be, and that's a very good thing. It's a very interesting topic. It's one that I hear a lot, have for years, In fact, the big question is, why won't he talk to me? And it's so funny, just as I popped up that screen, I noticed that I have my apostrophe in the wrong place. So you'll have to forgive me. Uh, I am fallible and uh, fallen and finite, just like the rest of us. So please forgive any typos that we have in this presentation, and we'll just go with the content. The reason I bring that up is that I'm actually um, a technical editor, did a lot of technical editing, so things like that jump out at me once I see them. It's hard for me to look beyond it. So anyway, the big question, why won't he talk to me? I hear this over and over again. I ask him questions. I ask what's going on, and he won't tell me anything. He just you know, gets very withdrawn, and if I keep pressing it, he will actually push back and and get angry with me. So I don't I don't understand what's going on. I've heard this over and over again. The question is, does he do this? Does he withdraw and refuse to face the issues? Does he have problems being open about things? Does he frequently misunderstand what you're saying? You know, it seems like that we try to talk to guys and we tell them what we want them to hear. And they don't respond, so we try again, and and we try with more explanation and and more words and trying to figure out what part of this are you not hearing? I'm talking to you. Hello, is anyone in there? And when we do that, it actually tends to make men withdraw even more. So very, very confusing to us that it's like the harder that we try, the the less results that we get. So very, very frustrating uh, scenario that we've got going on here. Most of us have some very specific beliefs about men when they um, exhibit this kind of response to us. And some of those beliefs basically are that the men are insensitive or worse yet, they're insensitive jerks. They don't have feelings like women do. In fact, this was one of the things that I believed about men was that they just, they, they didn't have feelings. And I used to behave that way towards men, you know, pretty much my whole life till I got into graduate school and started studying the psychology of men and began to realize, oh my gosh, they're not at all like I thought they were. And then are they only interested in one thing? You know, it's really cute. If you've ever watched the movie Enchanted with Amy Adams and Patrick Dempsey, it's really cute because there's a scene in there where where the little girl says to Giselle, you know, they're only interested in one thing. And Giselle says, really, what's that? She goes, I don't know. No one will tell me. (laughs) That's such a cute line in the movie. But we get this idea that they only really want us around to serve their needs, you know, whether they're you know, their their hungers and their passions, but they don't really care about us. At some point, we get that idea into our heads. And finally, we just believe that men just don't get it. It's like, does the elevator even stop on that floor? So lots and lots and lots of frustration that's filtered through our specific beliefs about men that we've picked up from our culture in general, from our parents, from other experiences with men, from talking about men with uh, girlfriends and such. That's where we end up. But today I want to talk about something. I'm going to take a little bit different twist on this than I I have in other materials other than one of my books actually has this in it. That's the idea of a boy code. And if you think of the boy code is a code of conduct for men that they learn as children starting from a very early age 
toddlers even start to learn the boy code. And I'm going to go over the boy code with you today. And I want you to think about what your man's previous experience has taught him that it means to be a man. And this is a lifelong thing. It's taught by parents. It's taught by sports coaches. It's taught by um, teachers. It's taught by our culture in general. And, and here's what the boy code is. The first rule for, of the boy code is to be a sturdy oak. Now, we like to look at the guys and think that they're, they're steady, they're the rock, they're, you know, there's no instability there, and they really get pressure to be that way. What that really means for them is that they're not allowed to whimper, they're not allowed to cry, they're not allowed to complain, and no sign of weakness is allowed. Just as I was getting ready to uh, connect on the call and I thought about this no crying aloud, I remembered the uh, line from the movie, I believe it was um, called A League of Their Own, where Tom Hanks is managing an all-girl baseball team. And one of the women loses it and she starts crying. And he says, crying? You're crying? There's no crying in baseball. And... It's a very funny line. It's a a very funny scene. But when you think about it, this is part of the boy code. This is part of what men are taught that you don't cry. And little boys, even uh, toddlers and preschoolers get taught that big boys don't cry. It's a huge piece of their training. So rule number two then is give them help. That sounds like kind of an odd way to put this, but the uh, author of this material, Dr. William Pollock, actually came up with these terms. So they're not mine. I give him credit for those. And give him hell basically means that boys are encouraged to engage in risk-taking behavior. Anything that looks macho makes them look invincible. It sometimes can be violence and high energy. And Superman. My grandson in preschool, he and another little boy got in trouble on the playground at preschool because they were playing superheroes and they were getting kind of wild. Well, for them, you know, this was part of this give them hell. We've got the risk taking behavior. I'm invincible. I can save everybody. And they got a little carried away a little bit, ended up getting themselves in trouble at school. Boys often get these very mixed messages from our culture, from our environment about how they're supposed to behave. And the default is always going to go back to the boy code. It's much better to follow these rules and risk getting in trouble than to break these rules and be sure things are not going to go well for you as a man. Okay, rule number three is be the big wheel. And what this means is that you're to dominate other people, be in charge all the time, refuse to let anyone know that he actually feels like a failure. So many men struggle with this on a day-to-day basis. It's a very, very difficult area for them. And so they're constantly, you know, scanning the environment to figure out if they're on the right track or if they're failing in some way. So he doesn't ever want to let anybody know that he, he feels like a failure or that he feels like his life is out of control. So if you begin to imagine what happens when, you know, you're bringing an issue up with him that you're feeling very emotional about, he doesn't want to give the impression that he doesn't have it all together. And so he tries to stay very, very calm. And in fact, he probably is feeling like things are out of control and he's failed in some way. So he's trying to regulate those feelings that he's having. And he doesn't want to share them with you because, according to the boy code, that's not something you're supposed to do as a man. So, number four, no sissy stuff. This is a really big deal and very, very sad because Dr. Pollock actually refers to this as a gender straitjacket that prohibits boys from, from talking about how they feel or expressing anything that would be seen as feminine and it's not that it is feminine but it's part of this very strict code that men are taught and they live by 
pretty much throughout their lives. And some of those things are the idea of dependence. I can't depend on anybody. I can do this on my own. Uh, warmth, which is, you know, the gentleness and closeness. And empathy, which is I understand where you're coming from. These are very much the feminine qualities that, on the other hand, women are encouraged to develop and to talk about and be involved with and share with one another. It's not that men don't have those feelings. If you notice, it doesn't say that they are not allowed to have them. They're not allowed to express it or to talk about it. It's part of this very strict boy code. So if you want to know more about the boy code and boys' experience in life, there's a wonderful, very readable book by Dr. William Pollock. It's called Real Boys. He actually did research, and this is uh, the report of the research that he did in observing and talking to boys of various ages and just understanding what their experience is like. This was like a pivotal book in helping me understand what guys go through. It's huge. It's very, very easy to read, um, written in a very conversational style, and you can get it from uh, Amazon.com or I'm not sure if it's still available in bookstores. It was written in I think the mid to late 1990s. So it's a little bit older book, I believe. I should have looked up the date, but very, very good. He has another book after that called Real Boys Voices, where he continues to talk about the experience for, for boys growing up. And if you don't want to do that, uh, you can actually download my book called Mothers and Sons, How the Maternal Attachment Experience Affects Boys social and emotional development and it's available online you can just go to my website at drdebbysmith.com and I talk a lot about you know what what do boys get taught about how to deal with their emotions what do they get taught about what it means to be a man how do they deal with separating from their mothers there's just lots of information it's a little bit academic in its tone but you're certainly welcome to download that and read it especially if you have sons, but definitely if you are married and want to understand what your husband's life was like before he met you. So what do you do about all this? That's always the big question. And the question seems to be stated from women in terms of how do I get him to talk? And really, it's more of what is it that you need to do? Most men are not going to talk the the harder you press them to share information that would break the boy code, uh, the more resistant they're going to be. But there are things specifically that you can do. First of all, bring things up sooner rather than later. Now, most of us tend to have issues that come to the surface and we think, I don't want to say anything about this because it will come across that I'm just a nag or I'm bossy or I'm telling him what to do. and We stuff it until it builds up. We have lots of emotion behind it with lots of frustration, and then we blast the poor guy with it. So much better to bring up something sooner rather than later because of that emotional buildup of of frustration and a negative energy, if you will, that ends up coming out as, as a harsh comment or something that's not going to go well. The uh, other thing is learning how to bring things up will also have an impact on how he hears it. So learning to speak male is going to be important. And when you bring things up sooner rather than later, learning how to say it in a way that he's hearing what you really want to say. Realize your emotional impact on him. Remember, he struggles. Most men struggle on a daily basis, if not a moment by moment basis, with a sense of feeling like a failure. And so if you're very emotional, that's going to feed into his perception that he's not doing well. And that will cause him to be flooded with emotions. And then he not only has to figure out, what do I need to do? I failed, I failed, I failed. But now he's got to manage the the hurt. He's got to manage his desire to respond back to you in a negative way. So with that thought in mind, you want to give him time to think before he responds. So, you know, you bring up the issue and you can say, I'd really like to know what you think about this. And then you drop it 
and you know you go away move on with the day and then you can come back a little bit later and you can say have you had a chance to think about you know what i said earlier you know i I really want to hear your feedback and if he says no i haven't yet then you go okay well would love 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 to hear what you have to say let me know when you've got some thoughts on it and if you can touch his arm or touch his hand at the moment that you say that and then again back off and give him time because previous experience tells men that if you speak up and you start sharing openly you're probably going to say the wrong thing so he's going to want to have time to think it through to solve the problem to formulate a response and if he hasn't told you he's probably not come up with an answer yet. So again, this is something we'll talk more about in in future calls. But I did want to uh, really make sure that you understand that men are generally internal processors. They're trained to be that way. If you look at the boy code, you can kind of understand there's, there's nothing in the boy code that says you sit down and talk things through with people. That's just not part of it. The message they get is you better figure this out. Because you've got to come across like you've got it all together. Very, very difficult. I, my heart goes out to men. I don't know how they do it. I really don't know how they do it. So much responsibility put on them. And uh, if they're supported well by their wives, they just thrive. But if there's a disconnect between a man and his wife, uh, he struggles. He, he really, really struggles. They can't be the leaders that they're designed to be without the the support of a woman who loves and cares for him. So uh, keep that thought in mind. What else can you do? Realize that men don't operate on the same principles that we do. We have our own set of rules. And, you know, in a future uh, call, we can talk about what are the rules that women are taught because we have very specific things um, that are taught to us just like things are taught to boys At a very early age, we begin to learn what it means to be a woman at a very early age. And so one of those things is that we never get told what the boys' rules are. So we expect them to operate according to our rules, and when we don't, we think they're rude, they don't care, they don't respect us. There's all kinds of implications that we draw from this idea that men are not responding the way we think they should. And actually, it's just they have very different principles to live by. The socialization process is very different for men and women. They don't think like us. Uh, They aren't affected by the same things that we are. There are things that will hurt a man or that a man will react to that women are like, why in the world would that bother you? And the reverse is also true, that we get upset and emotional about some things that never even enters a man's mind. It's like, why would that bother you? I I don't get it. So again, it goes back to those ideas of the different principles. Men don't act like we do. That's just kind of a given. We could spend a half an hour just talking about behaviors that men engage in that women would never think about engaging in. So, but their, their responses to things, in addition to just their, their, uh, everyday behaviors, their responses, the way that they act when something has happened is very different than what a woman does. Bottom line, they don't experience the world the same way that we do. Generally, the world is more friendly toward women than it is toward men. And very, very sad to think about what a man's experience is like as he goes through his day, what his interactions are with other people. It it, it can be very different for uh, a woman than it is for a man. Thank you for listening to this episode of A Wise Woman's Guide to Men and Marriage. What did you think? Did the information raise more questions? Do you want to learn more? Head over to wisewomansguide.com for show notes and links to the resources mentioned in this episode. And if you're looking for other wise women to bounce around ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for women on Facebook. The link is waiting for you at a wisewomansguide.com.